When I was younger, there was a family who owned a pumpkin farm. Not some tiny little patch, a massive pumpkin farm farm. And every year they would turn it into this huge fall village with hay mazes, haunted houses, apple cider, delicious food. And I loved going there, so I want to build something like that in The Sims 4 today. This video also contains a ton of landscaping tips, which we don't normally cover as much on this channel. We normally skip right by that part. But we also end up building two full houses today, so enjoy! Before we do literally anything, I have to show you what we got in a new Sims 4 base game update. We finally have kit filters. When I saw this, I was so happy. I was like, oh my god. Because I try not to use build mods in my game ever. I'm a straight edge Sims 4 builder. And these unorganized kits were driving me slowly to insanity. But anyway, we're going to be building here in Chestnut Ridge. We're building on a 64 by 64 lot, which is currently the largest lot size that we can build on. And we're going to set the stage here first today with some terrain. We are like Nick Jonas up in here today. We want levels, baby. We're going up. So I'm trying to make like these tiers here. And when I'm using terrain, I really like to use the flatten to height tool because then you can use a slider here to adjust exactly exactly where you want the height to be. And then once I'm happy with the height, then I go to the flatten terrain tool. I'm gonna adjust my brush size and then we can kind of like go in and clean it up. So when you're using this tool, it'll flatten to wherever you click basically. So if I'm clicking on this level here, I can bring it out a little bit. So we're gonna end up with something kind of like this, but I also wanna add a waterfall feature. So I'm gonna use the lower terrain tool. I'm gonna switch my brush over to the circle one and I'm just gonna carve out where the waterfall will go, which is going to be like right here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go for like a fairly symmetrical look today. I'm going to add some terrain paint for where I want my pathway to be. So this is going to be like just a marker for now. And in order for Sims to get up there, we're going to need some stairs. So I'm just going to add them along each like pathway that I just put. Okay, next thing I want to do is figure out where to put the waterfall. And I've actually flattened these edges here completely. So it's like a very sharp drop off there. And to find the waterfall, we're actually going to open up Discover University Debug. So you're going to go bb.show hidden objects and bb.show live edit objects in the search bar. And here is the waterfall. This is what it looks like in build mode. We're going to grab this. I also have bb.move objects on and I'm going to shove that as far into the terrain as I possibly can. It's okay if it's peeking out a little bit because we're going to hide it. And then once I've got that in there a little bit, I'm going to take my terrain tool and we're going to build down and fill this up with water. I'm also going to do like a little spot up here just so that there's a spot where the water is actually coming from. And then for those edges there, we can't just leave our waterfall like falling off <laughs> into the abyss. So I'm going to take some base game, again, debug rocks, and I'm just going to put them along the edges so that we hide that spot there. Another good trick if you're not using the tool mod is to turn on the grid, page down into the basement and raise it up this way. That way your rocks will actually go into the terrain and not like sit awkwardly on top. And one thing I'm also going to do, this video is going to be full of like landscaping hacks, but I'm going to add some trees here and then I'm going to go into live mode. We're going to be able to see the waterfall now. It's going to look so cool when it's done, but I'm actually going to fast forward my game a little bit. I am day three of fall and with the Sims 4 seasons, eventually leaves will drop from the trees and create this really cool terrain paint that we can't manually create, which drives me crazy. <laughs> I think it's going to take like a day or two, so I'll be right back. The next day. Okay, it's the next day in my game. It is day four of fall. I've added a little more landscaping to my waterfalls, and that is the terrain paint there that I was talking about. I really wish we got this with The Sims 4 Seasons, but we can't add that manually, so we kind of just have to like manipulate the gameplay. Let's start off with our first feature of our village here, which is going to be a corn maze. So I was looking through to see what we could use for this, and I found these here from Get Together Debug, and I'm gonna add these and rotate them like all along the edge of the maze. And then I'm going to combine these here also from Get Together and we're just going to stick those in some spots. And then from Cottage Living, I'm actually going to be using these hay bales here and I'm just going to also add these to like the outer barrier. I actually hate these in real life, like the amount of times that I have just gotten stuck in here and it's fun for like a second. But if you're stuck in there for like <laughs> over half an hour, this can quickly turn into not a fun time 
time, especially when it gets dark. Like these can get really spooky. There's also like these patches of grass here that I'm gonna use from Get Together. And I think for the outer part, I'm also gonna use a fence here. This one is from Cottage Living. And I think I'm just gonna use this going all the way through to the other side. So like Sims will be able to enter here and then they'll have to like walk through. And then I made a little exit over here, like with those stairs. And anyone that's gonna come in here and say this looks too easy has not seen Sims try and find the kitchen sink. <laughs> I'm gonna bring them in a little bit. We're gonna try and trick our Sims and maybe we'll try and make it spooky a little bit. Like whenever you reach a dead end, you're gonna run into one of these guys. We're also of course gonna be adding a bunch of pumpkins in this build. And after adding all of the corn and the hay, this is what our maze is looking like. Oh, the corn is like moving around in here in live mode too. This is pretty cool. So our exit is all the way back here. Oh, don't go that way. It's over here. And I just added some big like debug hay bales over there as well. You might also notice I added fairy lights and some like streamers from seasons in the trees. And while I was hunting through debug, I found these tombstones. So we're next going to build a graveyard, which I think I'm going to build over here actually. Or you know what? We'll do it on this first level here. And then up here we can build a little pumpkin patch. So this is going to be completely functional. You can actually grow these with the Sims 4 Cottage Living. So maybe we'll do three rows here. I'm liking how organized it was looking with these fences. So I'm going to separate this area off and then you could grow these or we could just add some in from debug just for the build. And there's a bunch of different options too. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of these just kind of placing them naturally wherever here. I always think this one is a pumpkin too, but that is a watermelon. <laughs> and then actually I'm going to add a little exit right here because how cute would it be if we did a little pumpkin carving area? So the Sims 4 is spooky stuff has these pumpkin carving stations. And I think I'm gonna add maybe like three of them over here or something. We could also pull the area together here with these from Horse Ranch. Oh, and as another activity, we could add one of the fishing signs so your Sims could fish in this pond here. I also wanted to add some of these lights here from City Living, maybe like all along this back part, but I also wanna bring them up top too. So we'll have like some peeking out right here. I'm gonna add more landscaping to this area in a minute, but I also wanna come down and just work on our cemetery. So I've got those debug tombstones we also have some from vampires like these ones so we can add these in for a little bit of variety we can take some terrain paint and literally make like little graves here and we can also add these spooky stuff grave lanterns all right so this side is coming along now i added a little bit more landscaping and details for our cemetery i added some flowers there i also added some of these like paranormal candles our pumpkin patch is looking so cute i also added some more like cottage living decor back here is our pumpkin area which looks weird because that tree always like disappears when you zoom in but I also added up here this like skating rink which we are eventually gonna have two houses up here one haunted one possibly not <laughs> but before we do that we need to finish up these three layers over here so I was thinking about adding some of the food stalls that come with the sims 4 so we've got this one here this is literally meant for fall and I think I want to carve out this area a little bit with flooring we could also add a set of stairs here leading down and this is where we could have like a dining area so I could add a couple different picnic tables here these ones I'm using are from journey to Batu. maybe on some of them we could add some like picnic baskets on other ones we could add some carved pumpkins and then up top we need to find a couple more food stalls that'll match our theme here I love fall food when I think of the place that I am like visioning in my head they always had like funnel cakes they were literally so good but what if we had actually tossed a little curveball here and did like a spooky shop. One thing I've always wanted to do is go to Salem in Massachusetts and we can make our own little Salem here with that broom stall. <laughs> we'll bring back our lights over here and there we have our food area. We've got our dining picnic tables here, all our stalls and I did add like some more seating and some trash cans around. There's already so much to do here. This is looking so cool. Okay, one thing I will never forget again, I promise, is bathroom. We're gonna have to add some public bathrooms here. We're obviously gonna have some like up in the house too, but just so you know, we don't have any accidents. But this is still a big open area and I don't wanna leave it just as bathrooms. This is a cool item here from Horse Ranch and like I'm kind of picturing an apple cider bar or something like that. So what if we added these barrels and then we could add one of the bars here from Horse Ranch. We'll add the matching bar stools and then there's a 
bunch of other decor things we could use. Like there's this. Is there like an apple one on here? There are like these. We could pretend that's apple cider. I think there are wine festivals in the fall too anyway. So this kind of makes sense even if it is wine. It's a little unfortunate that it's right by the washrooms, but trust me, your Sims will not know the difference. <laughs> I was also thinking maybe we put like a swing set over here. I'm literally just trying to fill up like the last little bit of space we've got. Okay, so this is our washroom slash wine area. I mean, convenient that the bar is literally right next to the bathroom. I've added mushroom seating. We've got some of the storage bins going on over here. The swing set there in the back. And I think this looks really cool. We're also officially done all of the layers down below. And now we can finally build our house. So like I was saying, I want to have two houses on this lot. One of them over here is going to be owned by the family. Well, I guess technically they'll both be owned by the family, but one is going to be like a regular house and the other one is going to be a haunted house. And like, obviously Sims will be able to go through it. We'll make it really spooky. It's going to be cool. But for this one, I want this to be like the epitome of a fall house. I literally went on Pinterest and found this picture. <laughs> so this is going to be our inspiration. We're going to have a front deck right here. We'll get some stairs leading up to the front. And for my roofing, I'm going to take a half gabled roof piece and I'm going to add two of them on here at the front. And then I'm going to take a gabled roof piece and I'm going to put that right in here in the middle. We're going to extend it over. I'm going to lower it and then I'm going to curve it out. I'm also bringing it forward a little bit and this way it can be held up here by columns. And then for the top, I'm just going to take two gabled roof pieces. We're going to cover each side with those. And then we're taking a hipped roof piece and we're just going to connect the two. So, so far our house is looking like this. I'm going to add some white siding from Horse Ranch. I'm going to be using Horse Ranch windows for the top with some shutters here from Horse Ranch as well. But on the bottom, I think I want to use these windows here from Seasons. They kind of have the same like swatch. So I think these are going to work. I think also up top, I'm going to add these like roof details from Cottage Living. We could also maybe add some corbelers here from Seasons. I'm going to add some window boxes. And for my front door, I think I'm going to use this one here from Strangerville. We're going to add a big chandelier out front as well. And I don't normally do this on my houses, but I think I should maybe add some like streamers going along. I added them literally everywhere else. So I feel like they could be kind of cute on this house. We could also add like a fall wreath on the door. And okay, before I go any further here, let's do the outside of the haunted house as well. So we'll have the whole exterior complete. So the haunted house over here is going to be a little bit tricky because we're building it on a diagonal. So I might bring this box in a little bit. The wallpaper I'm using, by the way, is from Spooky Stuff. And what if we tried to make the angles go like this? So we'll do one on this side and the other will be on this side. So we're going to end up with a really weird shell at first. It's going to look like that, but then I'm going to take my custom wall tool and I'm just going to build upwards like this. We'll do maybe one more layer up top like that. So like that's our shell. Very weird, but I'm going to take gabled roof pieces here. I'm going to put two of them onto the lower level, the one there, and then I'm going to do one over on this side. So with the paint, it looks like that. And then I need to take a diagonal one. I'm going to raise up the adjusters all the way up like that. Then it looks like that. And then for the top layer, I'm going to keep it simple and just do like a hipped roof. I'm going to raise the angles up again. And then I'm going to add these wedding beacons from my wedding stories. And we're just going to put that right on top of both sides. I've never used those in that swatch, but it's perfect for the look that we're going for. And then we could maybe also add like some of these here from Cottage Living peeking out. I think I also want to use the door from Cottage Living. And then for my windows, I really want to use these from my wedding stories, but I don't want the white trim going around. So I'm going to try and cover them up with another window from my wedding stories. One of the spookiest haunted houses I've ever been in was in like a real church and I will never forget it. It spooked the crap out of me. So I'm going to make this one inspired by that. Okay, so we have our haunted house all complete. I added more details around like graves and some of the dead trees from vampires. I think that looks so cool. And then over here, I also added a few more details. We've got the streamers coming down. I added more pumpkins and seating. I added some landscaping going around our rink over here. And I added a few more picnic tables and another small pumpkin patch over to the side. I do keep also adding these like debug leaves, but they keep deleting. But I am determined I'm going to keep putting them back every time. Okay, so before we go inside, this is what the outside is looking like. This is taking forever. Obviously, there's so much detail in this build, but I feel like there's one thing missing. I wanted it to be fairly symmetrical and now I have a big 
big haunted house on the right. I want to find something big to put on the left to even it out. So I'm going to add this big like windmill thing from Horse Ranch Debug. And I'm just going to stick that like right over here. Maybe I'll even make it bigger. It's perfect. I love this so much. The default name of this is Red Roan Field, but I kind of want to change it to something else. Let me know what I should name this place before I put it on the gallery and I'll do that. But okay, let's do one of the houses next. So for our layout for the main house, we're going to be doing a living room over to the right and over to the left is where we're going to have kitchen, dining, and a bathroom. Then upstairs, we're going to have a hallway, a bathroom, and three bedrooms. I think I want to start off with the kitchen and I've been using these like matching railings and and archways and doors from Strangerville. They have this really cool swatch, which I feel like is gonna look great with our like autumnal theme here. I want this to be a massive kitchen here. I don't know which counters I wanna go with though. Country kitchen could be cute. I was planning on wrapping them around, but if I do that, it's gonna like A, go through my house and B, look a little bit odd. So what if instead I use these tables on both sides and we can fill this again with more seasonal stuff. I could add some of these here, which I found using the filter. I want to put a big rug in the middle. I'm thinking either that one or there's a swatch hiding in high school years. Oh, this one. So I think I'm going to put that there. And then right here, we could put a table. What if we did a round table from Horse Ranch? We could use some of the orange chairs maybe also from Horse Ranch, but I'm going to have to move this out a little. Actually, I think I'm going to go with like the multicolored chairs. And I think I'm going to layer some of my curtains. So we've got like these here from Cats and Dogs. And the other ones I used are from Eco Lifestyle. Style. We're gonna add some cabinets up top. I'm gonna stick with the ones from Country Kitchen. Okay, so here is what our kitchen turned out like. We've got our dining area over here. I added a coffee maker right there. We've got some like get together coffee decor on the walls. And then going over this way, I added a whole bunch of clutter. We still have an empty like counter space so you can prep. But for my oven, I added this one here from Jungle Adventure. We've got our sink over to this side. And I think this looks so cozy and warm. I'm loving all that green with the orange too. I want to move into the hallway here and I think I'm going to use this rug here from Seasons and I was thinking about putting a clothing rack here, just something simple at the front door. And then over here under the stairs, I have this like weird area, which I was thinking about doing laundry there. And I love this brick wall. I'm keeping that all the way through like the back wall on both levels. But okay, we're going to do laundry right there. And then under here, I was thinking about maybe just putting like one of these or even the Big shelf could fit if we put it along that wall. Actually, this eco lifestyle one fits in there perfectly and I think I like that swatch better. I think I'm just gonna clutter it up with some laundry bins. Like we can use these ones here. Cottage Living has a super cute fall basket. Where is it? There's this one with the rooster or there's this one with the cat on it. And I think we're gonna go with that. And then going over to this side, this is where I was thinking about putting our living room and I'm considering cutting the room in half. Like we could have a super comfy seating area over here with a coffee table and like the whole thing but then maybe we add a wall here and we can bring the brick over there and then right there I can put a fireplace. Actually I think I'm gonna use the paranormal fireplace because they have these little shelves on the side and they've got some like green books in there so let's do that. We're gonna add a tv here and I don't know if you guys saw but we're getting a new modern lux kit which I was literally just saying how we needed new expensive like modern items in the sims but one of the items coming is a framed tv and I cannot wait to get my hands on that. I'm gonna add cute little clutter items around like this mushroom thing from werewolves. We could also use these here from Seasons as a centerpiece. Werewolves has the firewood decor and I'm also gonna add some wooden columns just to kind of separate that wall there. And I still have room up here. This is a pretty tall wall height. So I'm adding shelving right above my TV and then up there I can raise up even more clutter items. Okay so here's our autumn inspired living room. I really like the TV area. I feel like it's such a cozy little spot but let's go and do this spot over here, which I knew I wanted a bookshelf right there. And I feel like this spot here should be a desk. I really like this one here from Horse Ranch. I think I'm going to use that. Maybe with this green chair from Discovery University. We're going to add a computer, but I also want to have like an area for the kids to play here. This is going to be a family home after all. So ooh, we could do a creativity table. It would maybe be cute if we put this one over in the corner. Ooh, the one from Eco Lifestyle has those little like fall pieces. Oh, we're definitely using this one. But then they can have a spot to work like side by side. I'm going to add the book tables here with a plant on top. We'll add a rug. I think I'm going to add a toy box over on this side. And I kind of want to put this dollhouse, but it's too big. Wait, we can shrink it. If you shrink dollhouse,
Netflix is down in The Sims 4, they still function like normally. So I'm gonna do that. Even if Sims can't grab from that bookshelf, we have another one right there. Okay, so this is gonna be our kid play area slash like office, I guess. And the final thing we have to do for this floor is going to be the bathroom. This is one of the biggest bathrooms in the house. Oh, we could do the season's bathtub. Maybe I'll actually put that along this wall and we can use the matching shower. So like that can go in the corner right there. I really wanna use this bathroom cabinet. So I hope I still have room for like my toilet and everything. And I'm adding a table right between the bathtub and the shower where I wanna put some candles. For my toilet, I think I'm gonna have to put that like here. And then we'll use the matching season sink. And I think for my mirror over top, I'm gonna have to use this one here from werewolves. Okay, so this is gonna be our bathroom. I feel like I can just picture Sims sitting there like in the bathtub. Maybe it's raining outside and like a little chilly. We've got our shower over here, which is gonna be good. We have multiple Sims living here. They can be in and out real quick. And okay, let's move on from here up to the second floor. So up here, I think we can maybe do like a kid's room, a parent room, and maybe a teen room. And I really wanted to use one of these high school years beds because I knew they had like fall swatches on them. There's that one or there's a red one I could see us using. And maybe if we're going with this bed, we could try and use this wallpaper, but I'm changing the lighting so it's a little more orange as opposed to pinky. I'm gonna add some end tables here. These are from Growing Together. I'm gonna add these over the bed from high school years. Ooh, actually the chandelier also from high school years would be really cute. Ooh, wait, but high school years has these really pretty green dressers. What if we went like a little darker with the wallpaper and I was wondering what it would look like if we added this desk here from Werewolves. Then we can add a laptop and then on this side, maybe we can add like a stand-up mirror, some matching decor. And actually instead over in that corner, I'm gonna add the egg chair. I added some more decor over there and over to the left, I'm just gonna keep it simple with a mirror there. So this is gonna be our first bedroom. I think next we should try and do the kid's bedroom. But I also really love this sheep bunk bed from Horse Ranch and underneath, we could add a desk down there with a cute chair. The only problem with all this terrain is it can get really hard for me to like actually zoom in and show you. Like this is as far as I can zoom in, but I am gonna put a sheep rug. Ooh, we could maybe use one of the eco lifestyle lights. I forgot about these, they have leaves on them. Actually, there's another one too, like these ones here we could use. And then I was thinking about using these from growing together. They're like wall decals, but there's a bunch of different ones. Oh, that one is so cute. With the squirrels, is there a yellow version? I might have to change some of my swatches to match that on the wall. Like maybe we'll do the two different colors with both of the squirrels in it. I'm gonna do a big wardrobe over here in the corner. I just kind of wanted to match the wood that I added. And then I think I'm gonna add some of these cute base game like teddy chairs. And then for toys, there are some toy boxes we could use. We could also do the cardboard dollhouse here. And maybe as decor, I can raise up some of these cute pillows. So this is going to be our kid's room. I'm so happy we went with those wall decals. We have some toys over here, our cute chairs. And I did add some toys over on this side, even though it's a little hard to like get in there. But there we go. Let's go on to the next bedroom, which is going to be the parent bedroom. And I think I might use this bed here from Horse Ranch. I really want to add one of these comfy like rocking chairs in here. Maybe I could add it over in this corner. For my dresser, I think I'm going to use this one here from Cats and Dogs. And I might add some art in here from Dream Home Decorator. I've got a comfy rug underneath there. I need a mirror, which I think I might use the one that I was going to use in the teen bedroom. And then over here, we definitely have room for a TV still. I've got a shelf here. I'm just adding some more clutter on top of it. And as a final decor piece, I think I'm just going to add one of these here from Horse Ranch. So here's our parent bedroom. I'm loving all the warm tones in this entire house. It's really like pulling this whole village together. Clearly this is like a fall obsessed family. So for the remainder of the house, I finished up the bathroom upstairs. I just added a bathtub. We've got a toilet there and I added some laundry hampers to some of the bedrooms as well since we have laundry downstairs. And then just for the main area here, I added that picture there from Get Famous, which matches so perfectly. I also added an easel over here, just like an extra skill item. Not that we need it on this lot. There is more than enough, but maybe we'll also put like a couple guitars here or something. And I just tied it together with an end table over there. So we're finished with our main family home here, but we still have one more house to do, which is going to be the haunted house. And I think the most annoying thing we're gonna deal with here in terms of layout is the stairs because we are on a diagonal and unfortunately we still can't build stairs on a diagonal in The Sims 4. But when I think of like what 
a haunted house actually looks like. It is sort of like a maze. So I'm gonna try and build our layout like as a maze. Like I'm gonna build my walls going this way. We're gonna completely cut off the stairs at first. <laughs> so Sims are gonna have to walk around like that way. They might reach a dead end and then they're gonna have to walk all the way around this way to get up the stairs. I'm adding lighting, which is obviously gonna be very dim in here. For the purposes of the video, I might like brighten it up a little more, but you could always go in and like dim the lights whenever Sims do go in here. Ooh, look at this floor. This is spooky. I'm gonna add a bunch of creepy details in here like spider webs. I think on this first wall here, I'm gonna add these pictures from spooky stuff and maybe underneath them we can add some candlesticks. These are extra creepy because in live mode, these faces actually like follow you and like turn really scary. So like as our sims walk through this hallway, they're gonna have to deal with that. There's a bunch of like creepy vampires decor. We could add like this book right here. Some graves as you walk by, maybe they're representing these people on the walls and then maybe over around this corner I could add like maybe this old creepy tv which maybe we can like break on purpose and it's just like always on there are knives we could add we could make it all cluttered on the ground for some reason and just add like creepy statues and mirrors. What else is scary in this game? Oh, we have the ghost gnome. I think I might like make these bigger and raise them up. Like maybe this can be a creepy ghost gnome area. <laughs> like we'll have them flying around. I didn't know there were different swatches here, but we could even do like a red one. And maybe the grim reaper one is just gonna be massive over here coming for them. Oh my God, that's terrifying. <laughs> well, there's actually grim reaper dolls too. Ew, this can be creepy doll area. Hold on. I'm gonna like size all of these guys up and they're just gonna be like creepishly sitting there watching you. Same as the Grim Reaper dolls. And then maybe we toss in a couple like normal teddy bears. I've always thought there was something sus about Blarfy. <laughs> and Bun Bun, like if I run into you in a dark alley, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> what if we also had like a creepy baby bassinet over here and then it makes sense with all the dolls? And maybe we have creepy ghost gnomes like surrounding the bassinet too. Ew, I don't like it. I'm just gonna add some more like creepy decor throughout this thing and let's like walk through it. We're going down the hallway into the creepy TV room. And then we round this hallway and see the bassinet. And then we come down this way and see more creepy ghosts. And we finish off with this guy, like, no. Okay, let's go up to the second floor. I kind of want to just like cover this wall here with some mirrors. Like we could use this one here from the basement kit. And I was thinking about adding the paranormal seance table in here. But we'll add some like creepy chairs. And these dolls from paranormal are also like very scary. So I'm going to add a couple of these in front of the mirrors. I'm going to add some of the werewolf pictures with like the scratched out vampires. Oh my gosh, we need the tragic clown picture. This guy can literally come into your game if you like view him for too long and clowns are scary. And maybe over here we can also add some like red balloons just like summoning that it vibe. And then actually the mirrors in here make sense because it's kind of like a fun house but like not fun at all. <laughs> okay let's move from this floor up to the next one. This is gonna be the final floor and what if we added a coffin up here? Not the Murphy bed. Although that can actually kill you so maybe that is scarier. But maybe we could add like a couple coffins up here and if we really wanted we could actually have vampires living here on this lot. I'm gonna use these lanterns here for from Oasis Courtyard Kit. We could also add some spooky skeletons here from Jungle Adventure. And beware, they may or may not actually come to life. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be our final room. I set it to a heavy red lighting just because I'm hoping that at nighttime, oh yeah, you can definitely see the red coming from that haunted house. And this whole thing is so lit up. This is so pretty. So this is how the entire thing turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this village. This took me quite some time to build, but I think it was so worth it. The gameplay here, could be so fun. There's so much to do. You could literally live here as a vampire or a regular family. <laughs> but this is where we're going to end it. And let me know any name suggestions you guys want for this village before I put it on the gallery. And if you guys like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.